Coming up today on That LTD Life, do you have a software addiction? Well, if you do, I'm not gonna tell you to quit, but I do have the solution to keeping everything organized. It's called Software Subscriptions, and it's currently available not as a subscription, but as a lifetime deal over at AppSumo. Just 59 bucks gets you in the door. There are a few plans available. Let's go ahead and check them out real quick before we jump into the tool. Essentially, this is just gonna be whether you wanna use it for yourself, if you have a big team, or you wanna grow infinitely, you can choose tier one, tier two, or tier three. I picked up tier one to make this review. I think it's gonna be fine for my team if I decide to hang on to it, so let me show you how it works. All right, so the thing with software subscriptions is you load in all of your software subscriptions that you currently have. So this could be like I added our subscription to YouTube Premium. We pay $22.99 a month for this crap. I got the family plan, and I can see all of the info here, like when the next billing date is, what credit card is being used, and no, that's not my real credit card, the status of it, and when it was activated, I can add some comments there. If you want, you can even attach invoices to keep all of your documentation for everything you've bought right here. This can be really handy come tax time. Now, I'm gonna add a new subscription in a moment so you can see what that whole process is like, and there's even a Chrome extension if you want to do it that way. Before we do that, I wanna show you the admin panel here, which is actually kind of cool. It can show you all of the money that you're spending on different software subscriptions. So I've added a few different departments here, or you know, I was thinking kind of more like bookkeeping, like if you were to do this in terms of you know laying things out in Zero or QuickBooks or something. So we've got continuing education, web development, and then we've got the number of subscriptions, when they were added, the total of annual subscriptions, and the total of monthly subscriptions. Now there's also license key management in this tool. We'll look at that as well, but it wasn't exactly what I was expecting. Maybe it's what you're expecting. Let me know in the comments after I show it to you if this is what you think it's going to be. So for license key management, you actually add in the things that have license keys and then you assign them to other users. So I was actually kind of hoping this might be a little like mini password manager for the different WordPress plugins that we often have you know, license keys that you need to initiate or validate in order to get the tool to receive updates but it's not really like that. So the process is you add in the tool and how much you're paying for it. And then when you want to use that tool on let's say a client's website or you've given someone a license key, you go over here and you hit add license key, you add in the user. So I just added in Apple here. I enter in the actual license key that they're using, how much they are paying for it. So maybe they're paying $10,000, the status, whether it's active or inactive, then what department it is related to, and then assign it. Now, because this user already has a license, it's not even letting me add a second one. So anyway, this license key thing isn't all that functional because I mean, maybe someone just has two licenses. Is that hard to fathom? I digress. Let's go back to the part that's actually cool. So we'll go back to the dashboard here. I'm gonna start adding a new subscription in. Now I wanna point out you can do this via CSV if you want. So you could hypothetically just pull this right out of QuickBooks if you have it there or zero, and then just format it using their CSV format to get everything in the right order and import them in one go. Then for future subscriptions, you could do that through the Chrome extension and it would all go very smoothly. But let's just take a more manual approach here. So click on name and you're gonna see a ton of different software tools here kind of listed for you. And you know these are not all the ones that it supports or anything like that, you could really add in anything you wanted. So let's say I had a Canva subscription, I'll choose this, but you know, I, I could just as easily type in Pixelmator Pro and then I'll just create that subscription. I'd have to enter in the URL, but that's really no big deal. Anyway, let's go back to Canva. It automatically populates the URL. I could choose the plan that I'm on. So Canva has like a free plan, a pro plan, a team plan, and an enterprise plan. So I'm gonna see what the pricing is for each of them. All right, so it looks like Canva Pro is $120 per year. So I'll enter in the Pro plan here, price that at $120, change it over to annual. Notice they do have lifetime in here. So if you wanna keep track of all of your AppSumo lifetime deals, there's an app for that. All right, I'm gonna go with annual and I can choose the start date. And I want to enter in the payment method that's associated. Now, when I first saw that, I was like, oh, that's weird. I don't wanna enter in payment details into this application. But when you think about it, this is actually meant to alert you of what card is going to be charged in the future. So in that circumstance, it actually makes a lot of sense. They don't ask for all of your details. It just asks for 
the card name, the last four digits, and then the expiration date. I assume they're asking for the expiration date so they can let you know if your card is going to expire as if you don't have enough notifications already. Usually, usually SaaS providers are pretty good about letting you know your card is going to expire shortly, but every once in a while, someone forgets to, to remind you and you know a subscription could lapse or more likely the notification hits the spam box. But anyway, you can go ahead, give your card a name, enter in the last four digits, set the expiration date. I'll just do this year and hit add payment method. And now I can choose my new payment method here, Dave's Visa, and I'll hit next. I can assign this to a department. Maybe I'll do this to the design department and I can add a comment in. You can even add custom fields here if you want in a key value setup. So if you do have a license key and you want to enter it right in, definitely could do that. So I'll add this subscription. I've just entered in the generic key and value into the custom field. So you can kind of see how this works. And there we go. Here is my second subscription. You can see all of the details we just talked about when the next billing is going to be happening, what credit card is getting charged, whether or not the subscription itself is active. And then you can see the comments over here and attach an invoice like we saw before. But you know what I don't see is that custom field. How do I get access to that? Well, your guess is as good as mine. I mean, you can go in here and hit edit and then scroll down to see the custom fields. But I mean, that's not that helpful, is it? Anyway, if we were to leave the dashboard, go back over to the admin panel, everything has been updated here. I can see the spending by department. Yeah, really, really helpful. Oh, by the way, if you want to add in an additional user, you do that right here on the admin panel. You go to that and then hit add user. You can have multiple roles. So we can have administrators, managers, and users. There is a specific number of users like we talked about at the beginning of the video. I think it's five for tier one. And then if you want to go unlimited, that's going to be tier three. All right, I'm going to show you the Chrome extension in a moment. But before I do that, let's take a look at the calendar view. This is a very interesting way to look at things. You can kind of see your spending at a glance or when bills are coming up. I don't mind this. I think it's kind of cool. So every once in a while, I forget that I have a very expensive subscription. You know, over the years, we've been in business a long time. We have a lot of different software subscriptions that come about every single year. And sometimes you just forget, like, I know that, for example, uh, Elementor is charged in March. I don't really know when it's charged, but we pay for Elementor every single March. So. I'd like to have that in the calendar and just be able to quickly be like, oh, you know, it's going to be on this day. It's coming out of this credit card or whatever the case may be. That could be very, very useful. There's different views here, by the way. You can also do day view if hopefully your day is not booked out with different credit card charges, but maybe a weekly view would be helpful. All right, let's check out that Chrome extension. So let's say I'm in the process of buying Canva. Well, I could just click right up here, go ahead and add in that subscription right away. And I've got basically the same thing as the website, but in a smaller window here, I could enter in all of the same details and get a new subscription without having to go over to another website, log in and go through all of the rigmarole. Now, friends don't let friends buy roadmaps, but I think it's interesting to see what they've got planned in the future. So if I click down here where it says new and upcoming, you can see that the new features are the Chrome extension, the license key management, which in my opinion is just not very fleshed out and the calendar view, which is pretty cool. Upcoming, however, they're going to allow you to forward receipts via email. So that would be very cool just to sign up for something and then fire it off. You can even set it up probably through some kind of automation to detect if it's a receipt and then send it over to software subscriptions. That would be very cool. Of course, it'll take a little bit of extra planning on your side for those automations. We could also import PDFs or receipts. They're going to integrate with Xero, FreshBooks, and Zapier. Uh, I love Zero. I love FreshBooks. I don't really use Zapier personally, but if I were to use the tool like that, it is definitely one of the easier ones to use. So I think those are all solid choices for integrations. Yeah, so not a ton else to say here. I do want to point out that the documentation is basically non-existent. This license key thing really confused me at the beginning. And in fact, it still kind of does. Uh, like, for example, when you add in a new license subscription, you enter in the license plan and the billing date. Uh, but then you don't actually set a price for it. You choose the credit card, but you don't actually enter a price until you add a license key. And I just don't know of any software that works that way, where you are basically giving something a credit card and then you charge it every time you want to get a license out of it. It's just this whole thing is kind of weird. In fact, I think the tool would be better off overall if 
the license key thing went away, it would feel more thought out and just very minimalistic, but on purpose. Now, maybe this is an iPhone 4 thing. Maybe I'm holding it wrong. Let me know what I'm missing here. It could be like an enterprise level thing that I just have never touched. But yeah, other than that, I feel like the pricing is appropriate. It's a very specific app for a very specific type of person. And if this excites you, you'll know that it excites you. I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a 6.4 out of 10. I hope you've enjoyed this lifetime deal review. If you have, consider clicking on my link in the description before you buy anything over at AppSumo. Your clicks power this channel and allow me to make lifetime deal reviews every day of the week. Thank you so much to everybody who has already been supporting the channel. That's gonna do it for today's video. Make sure you head over to clientamp.com, get signed up for the free email newsletter, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and drop me a comment down below for the algorithm. My name is Dave Swift, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next review.